paper, mister. Get your paper here. Ramsey girl on trial today. Read all about it. Read all about the girl who thinks a racehorse is her uncle. Paper here. Miss Ramsey, in view of the testimony of the witnesses, the overwhelming mass of evidence compiled against you, will you not save the state further expense by admitting now that you believe the racehorse known as October, running in the Derby this Saturday, to be your recently deceased uncle, the late Willie Ramsey? I won't say that. Then will you state that you believe the racehorse October is definitely not your uncle, the late Willie Ramsey? Well... Well? No, I... I can't say that either. Then he might be? Yes, for all I know, he might be. Your Honor, in view of this admission by Miss Ramsey, I submit there can be no doubt that this girl thinks a racehorse is her uncle. You can't do that. That's a lie. That's a distortion of fact. All right, all right. Court until the sharp recess. What, what is she going to get? The works. Oh, this, they can't do this. She's been framed. How do you know? Because I was there. That's how I know. But they won't get away with it. I'm going to tell the judge the whole story, everything. Wait a minute. Come here. Listen, you. If you've got something to tell, why don't you tell it where it'll do some good? Huh? Why the judge? You can reach the whole country. You say the girl is innocent? Okay, I'll put her story on the front page of every newspaper in America. Yeah? You want her to beat this rap, don't you? Sure, sure. All right, then start talking. I want to hear it all. Come on, come on, give. Well, you never knew Willie Ramsey. He's one of the sweetest guys that ever lived. Well, some time ago, he and Terry were living over near the track. Come on, Sunset! That's a tummy boy. Give him his head, son. Give him his head. Twenty-three, four. Look at him. Everything working. Everything under control. Now watch him step out on his own. Right now! Uncle Willie, how did you know? Because I'm right out there with him. Know every move he's making, every thought he's thinking. <laughs> Honey, maybe I should have been born a horse. <laughs> oh, Uncle Willie. Well, it's too late now, but whenever I come back, I'll probably come back as a horse. Oh, sure, sure. Come on, Tommy! Come on, boy! Now, Sunset sure was rounding into form nice, and they had great hopes for him. When they worked that horse, he even made them forget the unpaid feed bills. Yeah, yeah, I know. We heard all that. Well, and they'd had an awful run of bad luck, you see, and uh, Willie even had to hockey his horse. Then one night, things began to happen. You see, behind the stables, there was a big crap game, and we were all there, all the gang. Terry was shooting, and the way she was making passes, you'd think her life depended on it. You see, she knew what the horse meant to her Uncle Willie. Right back. This is Joe. How about that? Eight passes in a row. Gosh. This is like a dream. How much is open, honey? Oh, I couldn't shoot anymore, not after this. Why well, wouldn't be right? What do you mean, right? Oh, I... Terry, give us a break, will you? What's the game? I'm stuck in this deal for 70 clams. Hey, now, wait a minute, fellas. You know how I feel about anyone who walks out on a crap game with all the dough. But tonight, this 300, these eight passes, well, this is different, like it was meant to be. You know, like magic or destiny or something. I mean, well, you wouldn't want me to cross my destiny any more than I'd want you to cross yours now, would you? So I'll just say good night, fellas. And thanks for everything. I don't get it. She walked out with my 70 clams. What kind of life is this for a young girl? Living in stables, hanging around racetracks with a bunch of gamblers and touts. All right, when you were a kid. She's not a kid anymore. I turn around, suddenly you're a grown-up woman. Yes, Uncle Willie. Yeah, and Martha always wanted you. She never wanted you with me, and Martha's right. She's rich. You'll meet decent people, get a good education, become a lady. Yes, Uncle Willie. What kind of a future you got with me? More barns, more cheap hotels, going hungry sometimes to feed a horse, and why? Just because of a cockeyed dream that some, someday I'm going to... Someday I'm going to win the... Derby. And it's around here somewhere. Darn golden rock. Take it easy, Uncle Willie. It's a blot on the state. I've written the governor four times. Uncle Willie, please, you mustn't get excited. Now, you know what the doctor said. The whole state's filled with it. People going around... Seeing their heads off. 
Well, don't just stand there. Say something. Kazoo type. Oh, you. <laughs> suppose I did go to Aunt Martha's. What do you do, Uncle Willie? Oh, get a job, I suppose. 30 years in the track, I ought to be good for something. Uncle Willie, what do you think the sheriff will do with Sunset? Auction him off and pay the feed bill. Sunset, a horse that could win the derby? Forget it. But he was the best we ever had. Forget it, I said. We don't have a horse anymore. Now, that's that. He was the smartest, too. And what a fighting heart. He'd have walked off with that handicap Saturday and then been a cinch for the derby. Now, stop it, will you? The horse is gone and you're going, too. You're going to forget you ever saw a racetrack. Forget you ever saw... A horse? How did he get here? Well, for heaven's sake, Sunset. How did he get here? Somebody must have paid the feed bill. Terry? Or it was such a nice night. Uh, maybe he went for a walk. He probably missed you so much he... Uh... Where did you get the money? Oh, uh, well... Thought you weren't going to shoot crap anymore. But, Uncle Willie, this was for sunset. Today for sunset, tomorrow for something else. We're going to sell that horse and you're going to go and stay with Martha. Uncle Willie, it's a quarter to twelve. You've seen your last race horse, young lady. The entry's closed at midnight. You're never going to run another horse as long as you... What? We've got 15 minutes to enter sunset in the handicap. Well, what are you standing there gaping for? We'll never make it. Come on. Let's just get... get go, go. <laughs> are on the track for the sixth race. Oh, you want to bet the horse out book? How would you feel if you were a horse like Sunset running against a bunch of beetles and your own family wouldn't bet on you? Oh, well, I wouldn't want to bust up the family. Here, put five on them to win. Ah, oh, thanks, Uncle Willie. I know he'll feel a lot better about this. I'm sure he will. <laughs> Joe says it's a bet. Joe says he'll book you 500, 91. You lose, Joe gets sunset. Remember, not a word of this to Terry. Gee, Willie, if there's a bet I didn't want to hustle, why are you doing it? Why are you putting up your horse? Because he is going at 9 to 1, and he'll win. And that means 4,500 bucks. And with that kind of dough, I can give Terry anything she needs, and we can still stay together. I know, but... And next to winning the derby, that's the biggest thing in my life. Gee, Willie, but anything can happen in a horse race. What if he don't win? He'll win. are approaching the starting gate. Pardon me. Excuse me, but I, I believe the line starts back there. I know, but please, I've got to get my bet down. You don't mind. Well, for myself, no. Let's go, oh, but I don't want to get shut out. But you see, there are other people in... Oh, I'm very oh, sorry. I'll do it. What is this thing, anyway? A Phi Beta Kappa Key. A Phi Beta what? A Phi, a phi Beta Kappa Key. What is it open? Nothing. Then why do you wear it? Well, I don't know. I just... That's wear... a pretty stupid reason, if you ask me. Well, I didn't ask you. Oh, Oh, now look what you've oh, done. You... All right, Miss, right. what'll it be? Number five. Nine. Five dollars. I don't have it. But I had it a minute ago. All right, mister, where's my five? What? Officer, police! You... Officer! Lady, please. Pretty smooth operator. I thought I knew them all, but this is a new one, catching your five bait or whatever it is Hi, on a girl's lady. sweater. Young lady, please, the you five dollars. People around What's here. What's the trouble here? Huh? This crook just picked my pocket. Now, I assure you that it's all a mistake, officer. Okay, okay. Now, what's it all about? Well, I, what's it all about? I was just standing there when this young lady inserted herself let him get in the line in front of me. You're going to a lot of double talk, and all the time he's got his hand in my pocket. Well, how about that, mister? Well, I sh Look, this is preposterous. I am Dr. B I am... I am Dr. Bassett of Some Roland University, doctor. and I assure you that I would not take this young lady's five dollars. Yeah, then who did? What? Well, uh, look, I, I'd be happy, though, to contribute five dollars to get rid of her. Well, what do you say, miss? Get my place back. All right, just as long as he admits it. What? Now, look. Five dollars, please, on Charm Boy. Charm, Charm Boy, you're out of your mind. Five dollars, please, well, on I Charm can't Boy. I let you do it, not even you. Tom, sorry, no more betting. 
Yes. There they go. It's sunset, getting away in front. Bandstand is running second. Nevada's third. Short notice between horses is fourth. Lady Gentry is fifth. Valoroso and Live Spot. Excuse me. Around the clubhouse turn, it's sunset, moving along in front by one length. Nevada is second by a half. Short notice is third a neck. Lady Gentry is fourth by two lengths. Live Spot and Valoroso. Turning into the back stretch, it's sunset in front by two lengths. Nevada is second by one. Short notice is third by a length and a half. Keep Live going, Spot is baby, fourth by two going. lengths. Lady Gentry and Valoroso. Down the back stretch, it's sunset in front and drawing away by two and a half lengths. Bandstand is now second ahead. Nevada is third. Short Wait, notice I mean. and Lady Gentry. Passing the half mile, it's sunset stretching out to five lengths. Bandstand is second by a head. Nevada's running third by three quarters of a length. Short notice fourth by a neck. Lady Come Gentry on, Charm third boy. Length and a half. Relax, Chummy hasn't got a prayer. Spot. Around the far turn, it's sunset in front by three lengths. Bandstand is second by a length. And here comes Charm Boy on the rail. Charm Boy is making his move on the inside. There goes Charm Boy. It's sunset, still leading by three lengths. And here comes Charm Boy running over horses. Charm Boy is winging on the rail. Look at Charm Boy fly. It's sunset in front by a length and a half. Charm Boy is drawing even with him. It's sunset and Charm Boy. Come on, move. Come on, baby, move. Stretch. It's sunset and Charm Boy. Sunset on the outside. Charm Boy on the rail, head and head. Sunset and Charm Boy. They're going into a drive. It's sunset and Charm Boy, head and head. Here they come, sunset and Charm Boy. Sunset by a head. It's sunset and Charm Boy and they're driving. Lady Gentry is second, and Family Dad is not. third. Are you okay? Yeah. Come on, nigga. Come on, right, Vince. Come on. We'll get out of here. Come on. Did you see that paper? It hit him right in the face, and he was breezing, breezing. Oh, the poor guy. That charm boy, some dog. 20 to 1. Sure, money, money, money. That's all you can think about. Not a word about Sunset, a great horse with a broken heart. That has yet to be proven. What has? That a racehorse feels either joy or remorse at the outcome of a race. How can you say such a thing? Well, all we know is scientifically that the thoroughbred racehorse is thoroughly imbued with the herd instinct and is happiest when running with his fellows and most psychotic when left alone. Anything else is pure emotional dribble. Look, you, I don't know about your herd instincts and your psycho whatever it is, but I know Sunset has a broken heart because he's a great horse and he ran a great race, and as far as you're concerned, you're nothing but a schnuckle. What? A schnuckle. A schnuckle? <laughs> Say, who do you like in the next race? Well, I don't know. I am going home. Terry? Yeah? It's Willie. He kind of fainted or something. Vince took him to the county hospital. Hospital? Is he all right? Oh, he looks okay. They just told me to tell you. Want me to get your cab? Never mind. Hey, Doc, will you drop me at the hospital? Sorry, I'm not going to the hospital. I'm not going anywhere. Certainly not with you. Oh, come on. How long will it take? It isn't a question of time, but it so happens that my time is valuable. Then what are you hanging around a racetrack for? Well, because I... If your time's so valuable, I'll pay you for it. Really, miss, there's no reason for me... Here's $5 in account. <laughs> I must have had it all the time. <laughs> yeah. You are the most annoying, the most irritating... Oh, come on, Doc. Would you mind going a little faster? The speed limit happens to be 25 miles per hour. What seems to be the matter with your uncle? Oh, I don't know. Every once in a while he gets these attacks. That uh, racehorse, do you own him? My uncle does. I uh, wonder, would he uh, consider selling him? Are you kidding? Uncle Willie'd never sell Sunset. What do you want with a racehorse? I need him for my work. Say, just what kind of a doctor are you anyway? Ph.D. Ph. what? Hmm? Ph.D., Doctor of Philosophy. Hmm? I teach psychology. Oh, then you're a doctor of psychology. That's right. I'm a doctor. No, no, that's just a degree. Most teachers of psychology are doctors of philosophy. Say, that's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Well, it so happens that I am studying certain phases in the emotional relationship between man and animal. Sounds to me like a good excuse to hang around the tracks. 
The racehorse is the greatest symbol of man's love of animal. Why do you suppose 26 million people spend $6 billion every year on the racehorse? Because they're a bunch of suckers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, uh, psychologically, why? Now, just tell me, why do people go to races? How do they feel? Good when they win and rotten when they lose. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh. No, no. I mean, psychologically, uh, what goes on during a race? The complexities, the emotional, and the respiratory changes. See, that is what we want to investigate. That's what you do? That is precisely what I do. Hmm. Doc, did hmm. you ever think of getting a job and going to work? What? Hey, and step on it, will you? You're driving like a schnook. Here, here, here. No, no. Mister, what's your name? Schnuckel, Dr. Schnuckel. I mean Bassett, Dr. Bassett. Dr. Bentley Bassett, Junior. I said for you to go to your Aunt Martha's. I said for you to promise. They say the good things a fella does lives after him. Well, if that's the case, none of us there ever had to worry about forgetting Willie. He was a little guy, but he had an awful big heart. Guess it was too big for such a little guy. Maybe that's why it ran out on him. Yes, you could be sure that none of us would ever forget Willie. That old felt hat, cat in his arms, straw in his mouth, asking for nothing out of life except the chance to win the derby. But who knows, if they got derbies up there, maybe he'll get another shot at it. So Terry walked out of our lives and into a new life with Aunt Martha. I wonder if Willie would have wanted it if he had known what was in store for her. I, uh, oh, never mind. Well, Mr. Ramsey, before we go in, perhaps I'd better make it clear that uh, your great aunt is very old and in many ways quite eccentric. And, uh, well, if at any time things should become too difficult and you'd want to leave, Don't I... worry, I'll stick it out. Yes, I merely thought as her attorney that Thank I... you, Mr. Mitchell, but you see, I made a promise to someone and I'll stick it out. Yes, of course. This is your Aunt Martha. Hello, Aunt Martha. So this is Elizabeth's daughter. Well, here we are, together at last. The illustrious Grant family. All what's left of it. Terry, this is your cousin Margaret. She drinks. <coughs> and this is your cousin Therese. She ought to. And this is your cousin, Jonathan. He doesn't do anything. I doubt if he ever did. Hello. And now, you. Heaven knows why I wanted you all these years. Perhaps because I thought Elizabeth's daughter might show a little spunk. But you will be as spineless as the rest, eating my food and waiting, oh, so patiently, for your adored aunt to hurry up and die. Aunt Martha, I'm sure no one wants you to die. And first thing, get rid of that animal. But he was Uncle Willie's. Get rid of it. Yes, Aunt Martha. Young lady, I'm told that once the racetrack's in your blood, it's there to stay. That may be. But you're a grant, and it's not in your blood. It's in your head. And I assure you, however difficult it may be, that I mean to get it out. Yes, Aunt Martha. Three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
nice. Thank you, Aunt Martha. Oh, you're beginning to look like a lady. See if you can behave like one. Yes, Aunt Martha. Good morning. Sun bonnet in the floor. Gotcha. Good morning. Good morning. Mercury on the Right. Good morning. Good morning. Sea breeze across the board. Right. See you later, baby. I'm late. There you go. Sunshine. Well, ain't we hoity toity? Is my lady riding to the homes, pray? Oh, skip it. Two on Sunbonnet, two on Mercury, and sea breeze across the board. Gotcha. How's it going, honey? Oh, great, great. Yeah, happy up there? Sure, why not? I don't know. Oh, I'm having a wonderful time. Breakfast in bed, every night a new dress, symphony, ballet. Why, they've even got a lady to teach me how to walk. No kidding, I'm crawling with culture. Are you happy, honey? Sure. What girl could want any more than I've got? Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's great to see things turning out so nice, the way Willie wanted. And that you don't miss the old gang too much. How are they, Vince? Fine. Tommy all right? Big Louie and little Max? Great, great. They'll all be over at the auction tonight. Hammond? An auction? Yeah, they're selling out the Willoughby stable. But you know the gang. They can't buy anything. <laughs> they just go to look. Yeah. I suppose you're busy tonight. Yeah, I'm going to a lecture, Bird Life in Madagascar, with slides. Oh, that's too bad. Some beauty's gone tonight. Well, probably it's better for a young girl to go to a lecture than hang around a horse auction. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I got a little business at the college. See you around. So long, Vince. So long, kid. That was the very day I went to see Professor Bassett about the horse. Don't ask me what a professor wants with a racehorse. All I know is he is doing some kind of psychological experiments on animals, and he asked me to find him a racehorse, a cheap one, and I got just a dog for him. A windsucker named October, going that night at the auction. I tell him about it. He gives me ten bucks for me in trouble, and I blow. I guess it was after I left that the professor stuck his foot in it. Look, are you out of your mind? The very week the trustees are here, cutting corners, practically knocking out the department, and you, you're gonna ask them for $200 so you can buy a racehorse? Well, the president of this university happens to be a man of some integrity. Hodgkiss is worried about his job the same as you ought to be about yours. Look, I don't know. I don't know where I'll get it. Maybe I'll ask, uh, I'll ask, uh... Yes? Look, all I know is I put two years of my life into this paper now. Two years of blood, sweat, and eye strain. Now, I don't intend to compromise this investigation just because the trustees of this university happen to put the almighty dollar above, above scholarship. At the risk of becoming very monotonous, I'd like to return to a rather pertinent question. Yeah. Just where are you going to get $200? Look, I don't know. I... Maybe the equipment fund. The equipment fund? Yeah. Oh, brother, that's really asking for it. No, 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 just wait a minute. This is a complete dispersion of the Willoughby Stables. The terms and conditions are stated on the front page of your catalog. I would suggest that you read them thoroughly. However, I would like to remind you of one of the terms and the conditions of the sale, and that is this. They are strictly cash. You will make settlement with the clerk immediately upon the sale of each horse. Now we are ready to go ahead with horse number five, Night Call, a four-year-old, out of Sea Breeze by 98. All right, I'm bid how many dollars? Well, you get to start him. I am bid how much on him? 1,000. Thank you. Now, 1,500. I got $1,000 on him to get 15. Come on, Rogers, keep your head up. You got to look pretty. Some sucker's going to take you home. Yeah, <laughs> some sucker with a junk wagon. <laughs> we got work to do. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, wait a minute, Charlie. I got an idea. I want to show you something. 
<laughs> this will kill you. <laughs> so long, Flathead. All he needs now is a chain and a pair of glasses. <laughs> Five hundred six thousand dollars, sixty-one. Thank you, now, Jew. Come on, folks. I never started an auction in my life. I didn't give that first one away. And that's exactly what we're doing here with this nice young four-year-old horse. The bid is sixty-four hundred. Now five. Yes, thank you. Now six hundred. I got sixty-five. Now six. Now seven hundred. Even I'd be to get sixty-seven. Now eight. I'd be to get sixty-eight hundred dollars. I'd be to get eight hundred. I got sixty-seven. I eat now nine nine hundred. Even I'd be now seven thousand. I got 69 now. Who's here? Hi, honey. Hi. Well, look at those clothes. She money, looks money. wonderful. Oh, gee, it's good to see y'all again. Terry, how long has it been, you know, since Willie? Six months. Oh, how he used to love these auctions. Too bad he's not here tonight. Who knows? Maybe he is. What do you mean? It's just a joke. You know, Willie always used to say that if he ever came back, he'd come back as a horse. He did say that, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he really did. He used to say it all the time, didn't he? And if he came back any place, he'd certainly want to come back here. I mean, where all his friends are and everything. I mean, he would, wouldn't he? Sure. Sure. Uh, I'll see you later, fellas. What's happening with her? Sure, you never know what's going on in her little head. Come on, boys. And now to get out of the higher brackets and give everybody a chance, we have number seven, October. Yes, folks, October. A three-year-old black by Nevada, sired by Stephen P., out of Betsy Girl by Punchbowl. We're not trying to fool anybody, folks, but this horse is reputed to be a windsucker, and I don't think he's going to break any track record so anything goes. Do I hear an opening bid to start him? Got to start him out somewhere. Who'll make the first bid? Tw uh, $25. $25, thank you, now 35. I got 25, now 50. I bid 25, only me to give $50. Did you say it, only me to give $50? Even only me to give 50 only now. Do I hear $50? I got 25, who'll make it 50? I got 25, only me to give 50 only. I got 50. All right, it's up to you. We have a long catalog, and I'm going to sell this horse. Going to the young lady for $25. 30. I got 30 dollars now, 5, 5, 40. Now, 40. Did you say it? Thank you now, 5, 5, 5, 45, 5, 45. I got 40 45. now, 5. Yes, I got it now, 50 dollars. Did you say it? I'm going to get 50 on you now. I got 45 now, 50, 50 dollars. Thank you now, 5. All right, 50 dollars. I've got 50 dollars. Do I hear 7 of 5? Pet 50 now, 7 of I, 75 dollars. Do I hear 100 dollars? Even money on him to give 100 on him now. Pet 100 dollars. Don't forget, folks, he's a Kentucky bred horse. Oh, Professor. Right, How are you? I Fine, thanks. Now, Professor, do you mind not bidding anymore? I've got to have this horse. 55. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I do too. 60. 65. 70. Professor, you don't seem to get the idea. I want you to stop bidding. Well, this happens to be a public auction. What of it? Lay off. 75. 80. 85. Professor, please, please don't do it. I'm asking you as a personal favor. Then weren't you in my 9 o'clock class last semester? No, no, it was the day at the track, remember? The day you picked my pocket. I picked your pocket? Yes, then you gave me a lift and you got a ticket for speeding. Oh, oh, yes, yes, a $25 ticket. Yes. Miss, um, Schnuckel. Yes, now you remember. Yes, perfectly, $100. Oh, pretty smart, aren't you? $150. $175. 
have Miss, the body. Miss, please, I need that horse very badly, and I don't have any more money. Now, isn't that a shame? Oh, look, you don't understand. I'm not asking for myself. I need that horse for scientific research. Research? Yes. On him? Two hundred dollars for him. $200. I got 200 now, the quarter, 25, 2, 10, 2, 10. Hold on. I got 200 now, 10, 2, 10, even on $210. Hold on. I sold him at $200. Young lady, you just bought yourself a horse. There. Next That'll teach you to cut up four, innocent Bible animals, stand. you, you, you four -year -old butcher. Six out of Fair Lucinda by Valorosa. All right, a dandy nice chestnut horse, and what do you give to start him? I ain't bid how many dollars on anybody to give one thousand dollars. Yes, I got it now. Fifteen hundred even on anybody to give fifteen hundred on him now. Here's thirty dollars. It's all I've got with me. I'll have my aunt send you a check in the morning. We can't send these horses back. Why did you bid if you haven't got the money? But, but you'll get it the first thing in the morning. Young lady, can't you read? There are signs all over the place. I'll have to call the manager. Oh, oh no, no, don't do that. Just a minute, there's a friend of mine. I'll get you the money. Now, now, don't go away. Oh, Doc, Doc, Professor, I know this sounds a little crazy, and I wouldn't ask you unless I had to, but I need a little money. I'll pay you back right away. I promise I will. You see, these auctions are all cash, and they're silly about these things, and, well, I'm a little short. Uh, About $170. Mm, $170. Oh, I'll pay you right back. I promise uh, I will. Let me remember this word for word, because nobody's going to believe that it actually happened. Oh, I know. You must think I'm a little peculiar. Peculiar? Look, in what vague recesses of that funny little mind of yours did you ever get the idea that I would give you, of all people, money? Oh, I just know you will, Dr. Bassett, because you're kind and good and decent in your eyes. You've got a, a generous, honest, clean-cut American face. Mm, I'm no longer a pickpocket, huh? Oh, don't be so sensitive. Look, do you mind? I'm in a hurry. Please, Doc, please. It's such a small thing to you, but to me, it's my whole life. I've just got to have this horse. I've just got to. Good night. Doc, I'll make you another proposition. You still want October, don't you? Yeah. All right, you give me the money, drive me home, and if Aunt Martha doesn't give me a check for $170, you can have October. Now, who's Aunt Martha now? Martha Grant, you know, the big house in the hill. Uh. Oh, thanks a lot, Doc. Come on, Doc. Oh, it's awfully nice of you to drive us home. We both appreciate it. Oh, you've really been awfully nice. Oh, may I remind you, Miss Ramsey, that I'm making this excursion either to recover my $170 or the horse. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Well, may I also make this very clear to you that that was university money that, uh, that I gave you, and if anything should happen to it, I... <laughs> oh, my. I, I'll take a great deal of pleasure in, in, in strangling you with my own two hands unless something more brutal comes to my mind. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to, you could be a pretty nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> For a nice, clean-cut American pickpocket, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you try to act a little more human? You know, relax. Smile once in a while. Live dangerously. <laughs> Goldenrod. What? Mama? He's allergic to it. He just sneezed. Horses don't sneeze, they snort. This one sneezes. Snort. Sneezes. Snort. Don't tell me he's been sneezing a goldenrod for years. I imagine. You sure you never saw this horse before today? No. Well, then how did you know about his allergy? He, he just sneezed, didn't he? <laughs> they don't sneeze, I tell you. Well, they, they can be allergic, can't they? Yes. Well, that's they... it. He's probably allergic. To what? Well, I, I... Oh, I don't know. Maybe to you. <laughs> Goldenrod. Goldenrod, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be right there. I'll be here. If he gets restless, just rub the back of his neck. He always loved... I mean, I think he'd like that. Please, Aunt Martha, please. I'll pay you back. I promise I will, but I've got to have this horse. He's very special. I thought I'd got that racetrack out of your system. I see your uncle did a more thorough job than I suspected. Uncle Willie left his mark on you, all right. Uncle Willie was the finest man that ever lived. He was an heir to well under failure. Listen, Aunt Martha. When Uncle Willie died, he didn't have a dime. But there were 200 people at his funeral. How many do you think there'll be at yours? 
I'm not saying this to hurt you, Aunt Martha, but it wouldn't be honest for me to stay here under your roof if I didn't tell you how I feel. Terry. Let her finish. You don't love animals because you don't love people. You won't let yourself. You're afraid to. You're afraid that they won't love you back and you'll get hurt. Well, Uncle Willie taught me different. He taught me to love animals and people and life. And if that's a mark that he's left on me, I'm proud of it. Aunt Martha, dear, don't get upset. Upset? Why, that's the first breath of fresh air that's been in this house for 15 years. That girl's got more spunk and honesty in one little finger than the rest of you have in your whole bodies. Miss Johnson, get my lawyer on the phone. For tonight, I think we'd better leave him in the stable. It's in the back. Do you mind? Not at all. But first, if I'm not being too mercenary, how about my $170? Oh, well, I had a little trouble, but it's all right. You've got nothing to worry about. If you'll just drop around in a few days, everything will the be... The papers. Oh, Professor, please, you just can't take him. It wouldn't be right. He just wasn't meant for anyone else but me. All right, well, let's not get hysterical about it, huh? I mean, I only want the horse for a few weeks. In the meantime, you can raise the money and take the horse back. But what are you going to do with him? I assure you, he will not be harmed. I have a nice, comfortable place for him on the campus. Campus? Yes. Yes, I think he'd like that. What? I mean, being around a college can't hurt anybody, can it? Perhaps you'd like me to enroll him in one of my classes, huh? No, but I'd appreciate it if you keep him away from Goldenrod. Good night, Miss Ramsey. Good night, Pro <coughs> the campus and clock him, you'll see what I mean. Terry, I'm the fellow that told the professor to buy him. And I tell you, he's a crow. Oh, you don't know this horse. I tell you, he's going to win the derby. Sure, sure. <laughs> then he's going to run for president. Hey, that's the professor's trailer. There's some crazy people here who want your horse. Do what you can. I'll be right over. I know you gentlemen are meeting with the rest of the trustees this afternoon. That's why I imposed on you at this early hour. Oh, that's quite all right, Dr. Hotchkiss. I thought we'd start with the biological sciences first. And By the way, could... what was the budget in that department last year? Well, it escapes me at the moment. 23,700. I... Oh, it seems inordinately high. Well, yes, it does. Do you hear something? It seems rather like a horse. Oh, impossible. but he only run a half. He's a windsucker. He'll never go a mile and a quarter. But he can, I tell you. I just know he can. Mac, what's the meaning of this? Whose horse is that? Why, I, I ain't got the slightest idea. Mac? I... Well, uh... I'm sure Professor Bassett doesn't mean any harm. He... Professor Bassett? Yes, sir. But he said he'd have him out of here the first thing in the morning. Gentlemen, I'm sure there must be some... Uh, hey. Taylor. Great riding, Tommy. Nice yeah. job. Good, Good boy. boy. Well. I don't believe this horse. Why, I never seen anything like it. He's almost human. Human? The way he moves, the way he runs. No kidding. If he could go the distance, he can win the derby. 
Vince, will you go over to Mr. Thorkelson's and see if he'll rent the old barn, the one Uncle Willie and I used to have? The old barn? Why there? Just tell him we're coming home. Come on, boy. Good morning. Hello. Bassett, how did that horse get in there? Who's that girl? And what's your connection with all this? Well, you see, sir... Never mind. Is that your horse? Yes and no. Bassett, is that your horse or isn't it? Uh, well, uh, not exactly. You see, that that's, that's the girl's horse. I just... You just what? I just loaned her the money. But don't worry, you'll get it back every cent. We'll get it back? What money are you talking about? Uh, well, you see, I have to have a horse to complete my work. And uh, I know how you've been about cutting down on those expenses. Bassett, so... where did you get that money? Equipment fund. University money? Let me see if I understand this. You took university funds to buy a racehorse, which you didn't buy. But you did give the money to this young woman who did buy a horse, which she brought to the uh, campus, converting it into a common racetrack. That's a rather loose interpretation, sir. It'll do. Now, see here, Bassett. You get that horse off this campus. Get that girl off this campus. And replace that money within 24 hours, or... or... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, I guess that takes care of that. I hardly think so. Under the circumstances, he should have been dismissed. You mean I uh, forgot to fire him? Yes. 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 Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll see you over at my office. October, I don't know if these things really happen. If you really are Uncle Willie or if you aren't. Anyway, nobody will ever know. It'll be our little secret, Uncle Willie. Oh, I hope you don't mind my calling you Uncle Willie. I know you love me to rub your neck like this. Just like I used to when you'd come home tired after playing poker with the boys. Oh, I know we're going to be awful happy. We'll move back to the old barn and we'll be happy to get to the two of us, doing all the things we used to do before you passed away. Oh, and I'm going to take care of you. Only good this time so nothing happens. And as far as the Derby's concerned, I know you're going to win it. That's why you came back. And after the race, we'll settle down in that little white cottage. And you'll have your little garden and your petunias, just like you always wanted. And I'll get you a little old radio, and you can listen to Amos and Andy, and see all your old friends and watch the races. <laughs> oh, it's going to be swell, Uncle Willie. That is, if you are Uncle Willie. Gentlemen, in my mind, there's no doubt the girl thinks this racehorse is her uncle. Well, it is the most unusual case of psychological... Uh, just a minute, Bassett. We'll admit that this is an unusual case. Extremely. But will you have the kindness to point out just what benefit all this is to Roland University? Well, gentlemen, I propose to uh, write a documentary paper which will show how this girl's obsessional love for her uncle has changed into a, into a terrifying delusion. I believe that my project will not only uh, be a great contribution to the field of abnormal psychology, but will also uh, bring Roland University quite a lot of prestige. And uh, publicity, gentlemen. Publicity. Publicity. Well, uh, I am not a scientist. I am a businessman. Dr. Hotchkiss, if you tell me this paper will bring us publicity, good publicity, the kind that will attract students, faculty, possibly even endowments to this university, I, for one, say it's worth a try. What do you say, Taylor? I'll buy it. That's it. You find a way to be with this girl, morning, noon, and night, if necessary. Study her. Do yourself a job. And incidentally, save yourself a job. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mind if I call you Bass? Not at all. I think it's rather friendly. Huh? Well, you've been so nice to me these past two weeks. I mean, letting me keep October when I've only paid you $7 an account. 
Well, your credit's all right with me, Terry. I trust you. Do you really, Beth? <laughs> Why, sure. Oh, that's good, because I trust you, too. Sometimes it's very important to have someone you can trust. Why, something bothering you? Oh, no, no, it's really not me. It's a friend of mine. Look, do you believe in things happening? Things? I mean, strange things. Well, certainly. Strange things happen all the time. Well, you're a doctor, kind of. You'd know about things like that. Things like what? Well, this girl I know. Well, the strangest thing happened, you see. Well, there was someone she loved very much, and this person died. And, and well, a little later, she thought that this person came back as, well, as something else. Yeah. A horse. Oh. Well, well, don't you think that's kind of strange? No, oh, what? Well, I mean, do you think it could really happen? I mean, the spirit coming back as something else? Well, why not? Oh, I don't know. I, well, it just seemed kind of wacky when I first found out about it, and I just wondered. When did this friend of yours first think this person came back as a horse? Well, I don't know. Bass, you don't think it's peculiar? Well, peculiar, but psychiatrically not without precedent. Now, it's quite a common occurrence. Oh, honestly? Honestly. Oh, that's fine. Uh, what happened to that friend of yours? Huh? Oh, well, she moved to Australia. Huh? Australia. She's in a coma now. Dr. Wilson says she may go at any minute. Well, that's fine, just fine. You've been brilliant, Mitchell. If Aunt Martha dies now, the girl gets everything. Oh, no, not everything, Therese. Only what's left. Need I point out that you're not lying on what's conventionally known as a bed of roses? You're in this just as deep as we are. You're the one who talked Aunt Martha into giving you power of attorney. You're the one who cashed the stocks and bonds. And made those wonderful investments for us. I assure you, if we go to jail, so will you. You don't have to explain the law to me, Therese. I'm fully aware of my involvement. If Martha insisted on a new will, why didn't you destroy it? Oh, it's not so simple, but the trust company is executor. All right, Mitchell, where do we go from here? Well, if we don't lose our heads, the picture isn't entirely hopeless. Martha's will contains the usual legal precautions about the heir being of sound mind and body. To put it mildly, Miss Terry Ramsey's behavior the past few weeks has been, I should say, something more than eccentric. Well, why don't you do something about it? As a matter of fact, I have. I've engaged a private detective. I wonder everything she does, everywhere she goes, and every move she makes. It's more than one way to break a will. of the Derby winner. For sure. Oh, really? <laughs> All it takes is the entrance fee. Him! Oh, 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 wait a minute, Phyllis. Look, honey, we'll love you and all that, but let's face it, he hasn't got a chance. Oh, he has. He's got a wonderful chance. Why ask Tommy? You said so yourself. Yeah, sure, Terry. But remember, I said only if he could go the distance. Only the distance. The Derby, honey, a mile and a quarter. And that's a long pull for a windsucker. You're asking for a miracle, and miracles don't happen, dear. But that's just it, they do. That's why I know he's gonna win. What do you mean, you know who's gonna win, huh? Please don't ask me, I just can't tell you. But believe me, fellows, I just know it. I just know it. Sorry, honey. Wait! I didn't want to tell you, but now I've got to. And you've got to swear that it won't ever go any further than this room. Fellows, the reason I'm asking you for the money is because you were Uncle Willie's pals. You knew him and you loved him. 
And you all know that the only thing Uncle Willie ever wanted out of life was to win the Derby. So you know that if Uncle Willie ever came back, that it could only be for one thing. Well, fellows, Uncle Willie did come back. Back? He's in there. At least his spirit is. The spirit. Now do you understand? Sure, sure. And fellas, if his own pals let him down, he'd never get over it. So you can see the spot we're in. We've got to give Uncle Willie his chance, fellows. We've got to. Okay, Terry. If it means so much to you, put me down for 50. Me yeah, too. Me oh, too. Well, if he don't win, he might come in second. Yeah, sure. there's only two horses in the race. Come He'll on, win. Yeah, I don't get it. You mean she's really going to enter that dog in the derby? Mm-hmm. I'm driving her over there this afternoon. Oh, it's uh, not a bad afternoon's work. Now, what do you mean by that? Oh, I uh, got a good look at that little project of yours the other day, and it's uh, one of the best developed projects I've seen. I hadn't noticed. Maybe somebody ought to do a project on you. Stuart. Have you ever heard anyone referred to as a, um, uh, schnuckle? A schnuckle? Yeah. Yeah, it's an expression the kids are using. What's it mean? Oh, you know, uh, sort of a square, round haircut. What? A drip. Kind of guy who doesn't know whether he's coming or going. You sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. 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 Cookie? Thank you. Another cookie? Thank you. You know, you're really not such a bad guy at all. You mean I'm, uh, I'm no longer a schnuckle? Huh? Oh, you have been for a long time. In fact, I think maybe you never were. Oh, I think I was. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, confidentially, the uh, Bassets have always been uh, just a little bit on the uh, schnuckle side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bass, huh? do you mind if I say something personal? No, what? Well, I've been thinking about this friendship of ours, and you know what I think? I think it's more than friendship. You do? Yes, I do. I mean, we've been seeing each other every day and every night for three weeks now, and you haven't made one single pass at me. Now, that's not normal. Oh, well, now, after, after all... And when two people are together that much, and... Well, I mean, you didn't have to come back and see me, so there must have been something, and... Well, I think you like me pretty much. Oh, well, I... I, I, I am very fond of you. I, oh, I think it's much uh, more than that. You do? Oh, yes, I do much more. Huh? Well, I uh, do find you most unusual. Uh, I mean, I mean, the most interesting. Why? Huh? Well, we... What do you mean, why? Why? Why do you find me interesting? Well, you... Your youth and vitality and imagination. Yeah, just like that girlfriend of yours who went to Australia. What made you think of her? She interests me. Does she? Yes, she does. Uh, that horse, what kind of a horse did you say it was? A racehorse. Uh -huh, that was entered into a big race. Nobody gave it much of a chance. Except her. October's ended into a big race, too. Nobody gives it much of a chance. Except you. Hey, you know something? You know, I think you're very much like that girl from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you 
you really think you ought to? Why not? Well, I mean, after all, buying a radio for a horse. I mean, what'll people think when they read about it? I mean, hear about it. Why, that silly bass. Who'd ever know about it but just you and me? Yeah, I guess you're right. Good day. Good day. Perhaps you'd be interested in a more powerful set. We're having a special today on the 10 tube radio's cabinet, um, that is. No, that'll do. You see, uh, he just listened to one program, Amos and Andy. Oh, I see. It's a battery set, isn't it? Yes. Good. There's no electricity in his stall. Stall? Uh, he happens to be a horse. Do you mind? Well, yes. Yes, of course. Good. We'll take it. Bath, I remember. I remember what it was Uncle Willie used to say. Let's forget about Uncle Willie, huh? Just for today. No, I remember. Maybe he was only joking, but he used to say, Honey, if I ever come back as anything, I guarantee you I'll come back as a horse. All right, come on, let's go for a swim, huh? All right, so she bought a radio for a horse. That doesn't make her crazy. There's nothing crazy about buying a radio for a horse. Well, is there? Oh, no, 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 Professor. Just, uh, well, just like there's nothing crazy about uh, falling in love. Look, I've been with that girl every day for three weeks, morning, noon, and night, and I tell you, she's just as sane as... As, as any girl who ever thought her uncle was a horse. A as... Uh... Oh, you're very smart, aren't you? Where are you going, Professor? I'm going for a, a walk. You mind? Good night, Schnucky. Some money uh, uh, with somebody? Yeah, Amos, I've done a smart thing. I put it in railroad stock, and I'm going to get a good return on it. Uh, yeah, railroad stock is good, all right. Uh, what railroad did you invest in? It's, it's your favorite plate. tobacco, Uncle Willie. The golden plate. That don't seem to me like I've heard of that one. Oh, you mean to say that you ain't never heard of the golden plate railroad that runs from, from, uh... Say, come to think of it, I ain't never heard of it, neither. <laughs> Just where did you invest this money, Andy? Well, the kingfish done invested $300 for me. $300? Why has you got your look on that face like that? Amos? Congratulations, my boy. Brilliant job. Brilliant job. Just what we want. I can't begin to tell you how... Thanks. Thanks. Terry. Terry? Terry! Uh, Terry? Yes, Beth? Terry, there's something I've got to say to you, and it's not going to be very easy. Oh, of course not. It never is. What? No, uh, you've got to realize, Terry, that I am first and last a scientist. Oh, and a good one, too. Oh, well, I uh, 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 I'm first and last a scientist, and you must realize that my... Well, whatever I do, my work as a scientist comes first. Oh, and it will, Bass. I'm going to see to that. No. Terry, you don't understand. I'm talking about us. I now. know, and being uh, apart like this. That what? was smart of you, Bass. It did us good. You know, we needed it. Oh, now, wait a minute, but Terry. But you didn't that have to stay away for a whole week. You should have come to me. Hmm? Oh, I knew what was bothering you all the time. Oh. What? That you wanted to be sure. Sure that I felt the same way about you when you weren't around. Oh, no. But you don't wait have to worry, Terry. Bass. Terry. The way Terry. I love you, that's something Terry, special. Now. And I'll never love anyone or anything like that again, ever. And that's 
the way that you love me, too, isn't it, Baz? Yes, I do. Oh, Terry? Yeah. Hmm? Terry, no. Terry, the, mm, there's something I've Once got... Once more. Terry, there's something... Terry, there's something I've got to do over at the university, if you don't mind. Good night, darling. Now, you know, Terry... Mm. Oh, Terry. Uh. <clears throat> yes? I'm Professor Bassett, and I've got to see Dr. Hotchkiss. I'm sorry, sir. The doctor's already gone to bed. I say, you can't do that. Where are you going? Bassett, are you out of your mind? It's about my paper. I want it destroyed. I was wrong. I was all wrong about her. I made a big mistake. All that about the tobacco and the, and the, and the radio and the... Oh, everything. Oh, I, I don't I'm... know what you're talking about. All I know is the paper's already gone to press. Oh, my, no, no. Oh, no. <sighs> Aunt Martha passed away a few minutes ago. Oh, that's most unfortunate. What do you propose now, Mr. Michel? Well, I don't know exactly. I, uh... Oh, uh, just a minute. Oh, my dear, I don't think we have too much to worry about. relatives or wills or what they were going to do with my paper. I told her everything. What did she say? She said that you were a dirty, low-down rat. Oh. She never wants to see you again. You better beat it, Professor. seems to have developed an amorous interest in me, which I have not yet discouraged, for obvious reasons. Oh, and I fell for it. I must have really looked sharp. Now, please, Miss Ramsey, if I'm to defend you... You shut I'm... up. But the court ordered... The court can mind its own business. I'm not insane, so there's nothing to defend. Animal psychologist put me in a cage like one of his monkeys so I could watch every move I made. <laughs> it's a wonder he didn't feed me peanuts. Now, Miss Ramsey, if you'll just tell me when your uncle... I did... thought I told you you keep out of this. I'm innocent. I don't need a lawyer. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. Come on, honey, relax. The great scientist. Well, he may know what a cat thinks, what a dog thinks, and what a monkey with a peanut thinks. But he doesn't know about a woman with a heart. Come on, honey, snap out of it. You've got a tough fight ahead of you. Vince, tell me the truth. Suppose they pin this on me. What does that mean to October? Well, I don't think they're going to let a crazy dame run a horse in the derby. Well, they're not going to get away with it. None of them. October's going to run in that derby and he's going to win. Not if you think it's your uncle, he ain't. But then, uh, who said he was? Huh? You think I'd get up next time and say I heard you call him Uncle Billy? Or any of the rest of your pals? Then it's my word against the professors, isn't it? Oh, and brother, you just wait until that trial. Your Honor, not only shall we endeavor to prove that Terry Ramsey is mentally unbalanced and incapable of administering this great fortune, but further, we who are closest to her and have her best interest at heart feel it our painful duty to insist that the court shall see fit to commit her to a proper institution. 
Listen, oh, she ain't crazy. Oh, wait, 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 recently published by Rowland University under the sanction and auspices of the President and the Board of Trustees of that great institution. Written by the, the brilliant young psychologist, Dr. Bentley Bassett, Jr., a scientist, a man who deals only in facts, and which takes as our premise the very reason we're here in court today, the scientific proof of the insanity of Miss Ramsey. Your Honor, I would like to call Professor Bassett. Raise your right hand. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I do. Your Honor, in the interest of justice, is something I must say. You see, Doctor Bassett, you will please confine your remarks to answering questions of counsel. Proceed, Mr. Mitchell. Your name? Bentley Bassett. Uh, junior. Junior. Of the psychology department of Roland University. Yes, Your Honor. Must we continue with this farce? There's nothing wrong with this girl. Doctor Bassett. But you don't understand, Your Dr. Honor. Dr. Bassett, there are recognized rules of procedure. Continue, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Dr. Bassett, do you recognize this paper? I do. Are you the author? I am. And the subject referred to in your paper, was that Miss Ramsey? Well... Uh, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all, Dr. Bassett. But you didn't question me, Your Honor. Things are different today. When I wrote that paper... Dr. Bassett, uh, please. Your witness, counsel. Okay. Yes. Well, he seems to be on our side. He's a heel. You can't trust him. But, Miss Ramsey, I, I must... said leave him alone. No questions. Your Honor, I demand to be questioned. Dr. Bassett, that is all. You may step down. Your Honor, I'd like to call Dr. Hotchkiss, president of Roland University. And Terry, don't be a fool. I can help you. Please, Miss Ramsey, let... Bassett and I were both there. She called the horse Uncle Willie and said they'd have a little garden where he'd raise petunias like he always wanted. I was amazed. I tell you, amazed. A horse listened to Amos and Andy. There she was in the football stadium, clocking a racehorse. We couldn't believe our eyes. I tried to argue with her, but it was no use. Like I told the professor that morning, she's cuckoo. She was blowing smoke in this horse's face and telling him it was his favorite tobacco. That's all, thank you. I'd now like to call Miss Terry Ramsey. Raise your right hand. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Look, Your Honor, this is a frame-up. I didn't ask for the money. They can keep it. They can keep their professor, too. All I want is to be free to run my horse on Saturday. That's all I want. Your name is Teddy Ramsey. You know darn well what my name is. And you know I never wanted Aunt Martha's money, and I don't want it now. The only reason she left it to me is so those vultures couldn't get their hooks into Miss it. Miss Ramsey. If you ask me, there's something phony going on. And I wouldn't be surprised if you got your hooks in there somewhere, too. Miss Ramsey. I'm sorry. I know you've got a tough job, and you're doing the best you can. And I want you to know that no matter how it comes out, that I have no hard feelings toward you. Proceed, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Miss Ramsey, concerning your late uncle, Willie Ramsey, I believe you were quite attached to him. He was the kindest, sweetest, most honest man that ever lived. Thank you, Miss Ramsey. He never told you nice things to your face and did you dirt behind your back. He wasn't sneaking. He wasn't two-faced. All right, Miss Ramsey. You could trust him. Just he... a minute, Miss Ramsey. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Ramsey, I want you to think quite carefully. Before your uncle's death, did he ever say he'd come back as a horse? I don't remember. You're under oath, Miss Ramsey. I object. You keep out of this. I... <clears throat> Your Honor, page 12 of the paper, April 29. According to subject, Willie's exact words were, and I quote, Honey, if I ever come back as anything, I guarantee I'll come back as a horse. Do you remember telling that to Dr. Bassett? I told him a lot of things. Just think back to the day you were swimming. Did you tell Dr. Bassett your uncle said he'd come back as a horse? Well... Yes or no? Yes.
When you first saw the horse October at the auction, what was there about him that made you suspect he might be your uncle, the late Willie Ramsey? I object to that. Objection sustained. Will you please sit down? Miss Ramsey, I'm trying to defend you. Then sit down and keep quiet. Let's find out what his angle is. Is it not true you subsequently purchased this horse, promised him a garden with petunias, and bought him a radio so that he could listen to Amos and Andy? What if I did? And didn't you purchase your uncle's favorite smoking tobacco and smoke it in the barn in which you and the horse now reside? Supposing I did. Miss Ramsey, in view of the testimony of the witnesses, the overwhelming mass of evidence compiled against you, will you not save the state further expense by admitting now that you believe the racehorse known as October running in the Derby this Saturday to be your recently deceased uncle, the late Willie Ramsey? I won't say that. Then will you state that you believe the racehorse October is definitely not your uncle, the late Willie Ramsey? Well... Well? No, I... I can't say that either. Then he might be? Yes, for all I know, he might be. Your Honor, in view of this admission by Miss Ramsey, I submit there can be no doubt that this girl thinks a racehorse is her uncle. You can't do that. That's a lie. That's a distortion of fact. It's a lie. It's a distortion of fact. Take a sharp recess. Well, pal, I guess that's about all. Okay, I just hope I can print it in time to do the kids some good. Come on, Joe, court's in session again. Thanks for listening to me. Everybody, please rise. I should like to make it perfectly clear that if there is one more demonstration, I will clear the courtroom. Proceed, Mr. Mitchell. Well, there is little more need be said, Your Honor, except to reiterate our conviction that Miss Terry Ramsey is insane and should be committed to the proper institution. That's a lie. That's a lie. She's not insane. Your Honor, this evidence is all conjectural. And as far as my paper's concerned, you can throw that out because it's a tissue of lies from beginning to end. Dr. Bassett, I warned you. Now, Your Honor, I ask you, please, in the name of justice, will you please, please just hear me out. My paper is a distortion of scientific fact, and I can prove it. Continue, Dr. Bassett. Well, there are very few facts upon which all men of science will agree, but there is one fact, one fact which is immutable, and that is that certain things which appear, appear true today can be proved utterly and completely false tomorrow. Now, I'll admit that I, too, when I first started to write that paper, believed that Miss Ramsey was insane. But if the court will permit me, I will prove to you that Miss Ramsey is just as sane as you and I and anyone else in this courtroom. Proceed, Dr. Bassett. I object. I would like to point out that the defense of Miss Ramsey is a matter for a practicing lawyer and not a professor of psychology. Quite correct, Mr. Mitchell. But since it is Dr. Bassett's paper on which the entire case rests, and since our main concern is with the young lady's sanity, if Miss Ramsey will consent, the court will allow Dr. Bassett to continue. Miss Ramsey? Um, it's okay with me, Judge. Well, Miss Ramsey, since you see fit to have Dr. Bassett conduct your case, I request permission to withdraw. See you around. Well, I'd never see anything. <laughs> really, Your Honor, I must protest. This is the most flagrant, the most irregular. Proceed, Dr. Bassett. Your Honor, I would like to call Dr. Hotchkiss back to the stand. When you were on the stand before, you testified that you heard Miss Ramsey call this horse Uncle Willie. That is correct. Uh, Dr. Hotchkiss, do you have any domestic animals, any pets in your home? You know perfectly well I own a dog, a Great Dean. Yes, and what's the name of that dog? Sonny Boy. Oh, yes, Sonny Boy. Now, do you and Mrs. Hotchkiss have any children? No, we do not. Now, isn't it a fact that many of the names that we are prone to give our pets, such as Sonny Boy, Sonny Laddie, Lassie, Buddy, Buster, any of those names, aren't they the very same names or nicknames that we would give or like to give our own children? Yes, I suppose so. And isn't it a fact that when there's an insufficiency of human affection in a home, human beings, normal human beings, often transfer this affection to animals? There happens to be a considerable difference between giving a dog an affectionate name and talking on intimate terms to a horse. Well, if my memory fact, serves me correctly, Doctor, when I was at your home, I think it was only a few weeks ago, I heard you talking to your dog. Yes, I heard you say, I believe it was, uh, what's the matter, Sonny boy, don't you feel well? Did you expect an answer, Dr. Hotchkiss? 
Did you expect him to look up at you and say, I was out drinking with the boys, where's the aspirin? What? That's all, Dr. Hotchkiss, thank you very much. I'd like to call Dr. Lucius Bradley to the stand. You know, much has been made of the fact that Miss Ramsey wanted to buy this horse a petunia garden. Now, as a botanist of some renown, Doctor, is it not true that certain forms of vegetation, such as grass, clover, and hay, contain a certain amount of sugar which is particularly pleasing to the taste buds of the horse? Yes, that's true. And is this sugar percentage not particularly high in the petunia? Uh, yes, but... Uh... That's all. Thank you, Doctor. I'd like to call Dr. Stewart to the stand. In all of our experiments measuring the reactions of animals to various sounds, haven't we found that in the racehorse, as well as other animals, certain sounds are more pleasing than others? That's a matter of scientific record. And wouldn't it be possible that the wave frequency and the voices of the radio comedians known as Amos and Andy come well within the range of those sounds which are pleasing to the ear of a horse? Yes, I'm sure of it. In other words, the horse known as October might like to listen to Amos and Andy and still remain a racehorse. Yes. That's all, Dr. Stewart. Thank you very much. I would like to recall Miss Terry Ramsey. Nice gone, Snuckle. Miss Ramsey, of all the evidence put forth against you, the most damaging is your refusal to deny that the horse October might possibly be your Uncle Willie. Now, do you still feel that way? Of course. May I ask why? Because I don't know. And I don't think anyone else does either. Go on, Miss Ramsey. Well, there are lots of things in this world that none of us know anything about. So who are we to say who's who or what's what or who used to be who or what's going to be what? Well, I mean... Well, take Cousin Jonathan over there. For all we know, he might have been a... rabbit. <laughs> oh, I don't say that he was once a rabbit or that one day he's gonna be a rabbit. But on the other hand, well... Look at him. Or take that nice lady in the sixth row. The lady in the sixth row. She might have been a Pekingese. Or take Mr. Mitchell there. Have you ever seen an anteater? <laughs> oh, I don't say that these things could be. But I'm under oath, and if you ask me, I've got to give it to you straight. I don't know. Your Honor, it is my understanding that people are found insane and committed to institutions not on the basis of what they do not know, but instead on the basis of the false things which they insist that they do know. Is that correct? Well, I contend that Miss Terry Ramsey, by her refusal to admit to a fact which no mortal being on earth can be sure of, has disproved these accusations and has proved herself to be a person of intelligence and integrity, and certainly just as rational as anyone in this courtroom. Thank you very much, Miss Ramsey. Your Honor, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. Proceed. Miss Ramsey, you've been very entertaining. But since you're still under oath, I'd like to ask you one simple question. Are you in love with Dr. Bassett? Yes, I am. And Dr. Bassett, are you in love with Miss Ramsey? Do I have to answer that? Have you any reason for not answering it? Yes. Yes, I'm in love with her. Your Honor, in view of these admissions and the clumsy gallantry indulged in by Dr. Bassett, in his feeble effort to save the woman he loves, I submit that his testimony and the so-called testimony of his personal stooges is so prejudiced as to be inadmissible in a court of law, and I demand that it be stricken from the record. Mr. Mitchell, are you accusing Dr. Bassett and these witnesses of committing perjury? Well... Have you any evidence to substantiate such an accusation? <laughs> well, no, not exactly, but... Proceed, Dr. Bassett. I have nothing more to say. Mr. Mitchell? Now, just a minute, Your Honor. Come on, somebody think of something fast. Oh, we've lost. She'll never admit her uncle's a horse. Not here, she won't. What about the derby tomorrow? What about it? During the race, she might get excited, carried away emotionally. That's right. If she'd ever call him Uncle Willie, she'd do it then, a public admission. Uh, Your Honor, in view of new evidence, which we shall not be able to produce until Monday morning, we request a recess over the weekend. Have you any objection? Can I run my horse in the derby tomorrow? Well, that's up to the racing association. Mr. Rollins? She paid her entry fee. Far as we're concerned, the horse is still a horse. <laughs> this court is recessed until Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Oh, this is wonderful. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Good 
afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. This is Hal Moore speaking to you from the scene of what is expected to be the strangest derby in the history of this great American classic. It seems that everyone who has been able to beg, borrow, or steal the price has come to this historic race course today. On top of the usual excitement which pervades the atmosphere, the question in the minds of these 82,000 spectators is whether the horse October is really Miss Terry Ramsey's Uncle Willie. You hear it the moment you come on the race course. You hear it in the grandstand. You hear it in the paddock, and you even hear it at the betting windows. Is October Uncle Willie? And now, the horses have come on the track for the parade to the post, and very shortly, the running of this year's derby will become history. The big moment is approaching. The moment for which these royal bloods of the American turf have been prepared for three years. Everything that their owners and trainers could do has been done to bring them up to the peak of condition. Most of these horses have had hard, tightening up races in preparation for the derby. The finest jockeys available have been hired. You can almost feel the excitement that sweeps through the crowd. Every year the spine-tingling suspense climbs higher, but this year with October in the field, or is it Uncle Willie, a new high has been reached. Everyone is waiting tensely, breathlessly. The bets are down, and the issue hangs in the balance. The field is turned, and now we see these ten hard-hitting thoroughbreds in post-parade. And here is the derby field. Leading is Aristocrat, last year's champion two-year-old. Next in line is Golden Helmet, the favorite on the basis of his three stakes victories this spring. Third in the parade is the center of the sensational controversy now raging in the courts. October, carrying Miss Terry Ramsey's dotted red silks. To me, he looks very much like a racehorse, although the talk is that he's a wind sucker who won't run more than three quarters of a mile. Today, he's going to have to run a mile and a quarter, and it's a distinct question whether or not October can go that far. Number four is Royal Ark, holder of two track records. But now I see the horses have reached the starting gate. Golden Helmet has moved into the gate. Royal Ark has moved in. Now we're waiting for October behind the gate. Got your pen. All right. Now stand right beside her. And remember, I want every word she says. Let's hurry. Hold in line. They're off. Royal Ark showing in front by a head. Aristocrat under a hold is second. Black Hickory is third. There's a gap of two lengths, and then Bright Gleam on the rail is fourth by a head. Golden Helmet, the favorite, is running fifth on the outside. And then comes October on the inside, and he's dropping back. They're out running October. Around the clubhouse turn, it's Royal Ark winging out in front by a length. Aristocrat is second and closing ground. Black Hickory under the whip is third ahead. Bright Gleam is fourth. And now Golden Helmet is beginning to wake up. Then comes Red Knight and Standards High. October is trailing. Down the back stretch, it's Royal Ark stretching out by two lengths. Then comes Aristocrat and Black Hickory fighting it out head and head. Black Hickory under the whip. October is running last. He's a good 20 lengths off the leaders. Passing the half-mile pole, it's Aristocrat in command by a half-length. And now Golden Helmet, the favorite, is coming into contention between horses. He's Let's second by three quarters of a Let's go October! Royal October nothing! Come on, Willie! Come on, going to the Come on Willie! Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! Come And now, October is making a surprise move. October is beginning to pass horses. Come on, Willie! Come on, Uncle Willie! Come on, Uncle Willie! Come on, Uncle Willie! Golden Helmet is now leading by a head. Aristocrat is second by a length. Come on, Uncle Willie! Come on, Uncle Willie! Come on, Uncle Willie! Right clean, and here comes October. He's fifth, he's under the whip, he's fourth. He's moving at the leaders. It's Golden Helmet in front by a head. Aristocrat second, and October in close quarters on the rail. He's trying to break through, but he can't make it. It's Golden Helmet on the outside. Aristocrat between horses, and October. And October is being shuffled back on the rail. He can't find racing room. Don't stop, honey. It's keep Golden going, Helmet keep going. Head and head. October coming again, forcing his way on the inside. He's getting through. Uncle Willie's getting through. Listen to that crowd yell for Uncle Willie. Turning to home with Uncle a quarter Willie. mile still to go. It's Golden Helmet by a head. Aristocrat by a neck. And Uncle Willie closing ground steadily on the rail. What a race this is. There's an eight mile to go. And it's Golden Helmet, Aristocrat, and Uncle Willie. They're going into a drive, head and head.
It's Uncle Willie now taking the lead. Uncle Willie by a neck. Uncle Willie by a half length. It's Uncle Willie and open going clear. Who said he couldn't go a mile and a quarter? Come on, Uncle Willie! Come on! Come it's Uncle Willie by two lengths. It's Uncle Willie and he's not going to stop today. They're coming down to the finish line. And it's Uncle Willie the winner by a length. Golden helmet is second by two. shouldn't have let him run. He ran a great race and he won the derby. That's all he ever wanted. Well, do you need any more proof? Mr. Mitchell, if that girl is crazy just because she called him Uncle Willie, so are 82,000 other people at this track, including myself. Oh, by the way, I'd like to see you in my chambers Monday morning. I want to examine the books of the Martha Grant estate. Me. Do you think there's anything wrong? There's nothing wrong with you, Terry. You just wanted Willie back so very, very badly you were willing to believe anything. It was perfectly normal. Could happen to anyone. Are you sure, Ben? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Ben. Ah, uh, don't be a schnuckle. Mm-hmm. 